So I'm going to play through the timeline. I'll play it on medium speed. I think it takes about five minutes to get through it all. So the way the map is at the moment, at the end of the day, at the end of the game, I'm going to control most of this land up here, and obviously all of Japan. So I actually started quite small with Korea. Probably similar borders to modern day North and Korea, North and South Korea joined up. Maybe a bit more land up here than they have now. And I'll play it on medium speed and see how fast I expanded over the uh, 380 odd years of gameplay. That Yusugi actually took dominance quite early on. I didn't realise that because I couldn't really see much, but well, they were a big power and they lost a lot of it soon after, so disregard that comment. Had power and lost power. So Hayekzi got swallowed up by me, but then Jan Shao swallowed up lots of Yeren. At this stage they were a little bit threatening. Chicago had a big chunk of Japan. Had a lot of it. They really um dropped the ball a bit there. Jian Shao had quite a big land base up here. But effectively, I blocked them out by going straight north. I didn't really give any room to expand, which probably helped me. I think my the biggest thing was that Ming did not fall apart like they can do. If Ming had fallen apart, it would have given me so much room to move into China itself. I would have taken a lot of these very powerful provinces around here. Unfortunately, they didn't, and they stuck it out. I did manage to keep them as an ally for a majority of the game, which was good. Luckily, they didn't turn on me. I was worried the whole time when I realized they weren't going to break up. My biggest concern was that Ming would eventually turn on me. And they did ever so briefly, but ultimately it was me that turned on them. So I was quite surprised that I actually got to the end of this game, to be honest. I don't really have any regrets. I think I've played it as good as I could, considering that Ming did hold on. The only thing I wish I'd probably had done was actually embraced, or well, took the uh, colonizing idea because by the end, all of Siberia to the north was controlled by mostly Ming and some of Russia, and I think that could have been land that I could have taken. So if I had my game again, I would have done some colonizing. Uh, but really, there's not much else I could have done. I was quite happy that I, how I went. Quite happy that I completed the uh, Korean national mission of taking land from Ming which for a very long time was looking unlikely. It was a bit of a, it was a very close war that one, it was a very sneaky snatch and grab and piece up as soon as I could, but it worked. Japanese conquest took a lot longer than I thought. I thought once I had a foothold on Japan that it would be easier. Uh, obviously the Japanese provinces are quite powerful and they can, for a small area, they can fuel quite large armies. And because it's on an island to themselves, I couldn't rely on support of my allies, so I was kind of doing it by myself. Um, but as you can see, I slowly just uh, gobbled Japan up bit by bit. Which means I can turn a lot more resources to the mainland rather than worrying about two different land bases. Yarkin was quite useful, it was a bit of a buffer between. Myself, Ming, and Russia. Having Yakin there probably prevented some bigger wars starting earlier. And then came the moment where the, the Russia Ming Korea alliance all shifted around. I dumped Russia and Ming, went for the Ottomans and Timurids, which expanded the whole, the whole area, the whole world. It just increased, you know, beyond recognition for Korea then, because it brought 
entire Asia into this global or this Asian wide conflict. He shifted me love in the game a bit and gave me the power, the ability to take on Ming. Otherwise, I was kind of boxed in and was looking at a good 200 years of not much happening. Even at the last. The last hundred years were a bit uneventful, only a few minor wars here and there. Um, but it was mostly all preparation for completing the Korean national mission. As we said, very little change in the last minute or so. But there it was, there's the uh one my, my first land grab from Ming. It was my second, and that's where I was able to complete the mission. It was a very, uh, very monumental occasion for Korea then. Didn't look like it was anything possible, but I got it right in the last 50 odd years of the game, completed that mission. And just for fun, is I took over Korchun to make my land look bigger. Sneaky war against Yarkand right at the end. And that Ming battle, what? If that had gone a bit longer, a bit another 10 years left in the game, it would have been interesting to see how far we could have taken that. Now, that is how the world looked at the end, so... Gone from having just that peninsula and a bit of land to controlling all of that. I was, um, I'm quite happy with how that's finished up. And with that... I will now quit the game for the last time. As with uh, all my playthroughs I do, with commentary or not, I always like to play through the credits for the game at the very end. I think it's only fair. I'm making these videos out of fun. Not that I'm getting any money for it. I'm not profiting from it all, but I still think we should... um. At, least, at the very least, after such a long playthrough, or any game really, no matter how long it takes to play through, you should at least spend what, the 5 or 10 minutes going through the credits for the game. This is the second Let's Play I finished. The first one was Diablo 2. We started basically the same time. I think I started EU4 maybe a day earlier. I was playing them simultaneously. Obviously Diablo 2 is a bit quicker to finish. I must say, this for the, I've played a lot of EU4 games, I want to say a lot, probably about 10 or so games start to finish. This is the first time I've actually done it with commentary. And I think it's been a much more enjoyable, or not say much more, it's been a very enjoyable experience. It gives you a different idea on playing. You're not really just playing it for the sake of it. You really do think about every little thing that you do. And I think you actually, a lot of the smaller decisions you think about a lot more, and you don't zone out as much. I know sometimes when you're playing games, you kind of just zone out and go through and you realize that you've done 50 years of gameplay and nothing, you don't really remember what you've done. Whereas because when you're doing it with the commentary, you actively think about every little decision that you make. And I think you definitely get a lot more involved in the game and you think about it and you take a lot more care. And I did enjoy that aspect of it. So... I will definitely be doing some more EU4 playthroughs. I've got a few ideas. I have purchased another expansion during this one. I purchased Cradle of Civilization. So my next gameplay, or well my next Let's Play will most likely be in uh, the Middle East in the area to take advantage of those new features. And I've got a couple of other nations lined up. So I want to try and, I probably might do a hardcore version or Iron Man version next try and get a couple more achievements on Steam. I always like looking at what achievements are available. It gives you an idea of a country to play that you might not usually choose. Um, but with that, I think this is going to be 68 episodes altogether. Was it maybe 69 now? I'm not too sure. And it's been a long, a long process. It's taken me a bit over a month, I think. About six weeks to film the whole thing start to finish. 
uh, but it's been very enjoyable. You notice that this is the first time I've gone, I've actually been uploading and playing multiple games at once, where I started Diablo, EU4 and Star Wars Racer all at the same time. I thought I'd try something different, give it more variety, uh, but I didn't really enjoy doing it that way. I felt like some games I kind of rushed to get to other games more. So I won't be doing that in the future. I think from now on I'm going to stick with just playing one game at a time, finishing them one game and then moving on to the next one. I think the next game I'm looking at playing is going to be The Division. It will be a story-based playthrough. It's not worried about the MMO aspect, more just playing a brand new character in the first area and go through the whole story that the game provides and see how that goes. I haven't played it for a while, so I'm looking forward to that. Obviously got a few more EU4 campaigns lined up. I'm going to revisit Diablo 2 and I'll probably even do a Diablo 3 playthrough at some stage. They're my immediate plans, but I've got a quite a long list of games I do want to play. And then with that, we'll just... Um, that'll be it for me. I'll let the credits play through to the end. Once again, I just want to thank everyone for the support, for the, my subscribers and the people that actually watched the episodes. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you might have even learnt something or one or things or two. I don't think I'm quite as entertaining as the likes of Pravis, but this is my first run. Probably a little bit cautious in how I play, but there's so much to lose in these kind of games and you get into it. Uh, so again, thanks everyone, and I hope to see you for my next playthroughs and Let's Plays. And as always, take care out there.